fixed and how we'll be converting, for example, um, you know, the product awareness into purchase intent. And if brand awareness was our main goal, we would need to be very clear exactly how to amplify a company's message and to increase customer loyalty via social media. Now, whilst practically every brand out there is either on Facebook or Twitter, and I'm sure a lot of you are yourself, you know, there are many other social media platforms out there available to us. Some are, many companies haven't even used, such as Snapchat, Instagram, or StumbleUpon. And typically, brands just don't have the time or the resources to be on every portal. So, how do we as marketers prioritize this? Well, the answer lies in the fact that we should always choose the social media profiles that best fit our target audience and our brand positioning. A good example of this would be that if we were, had a much younger base of, say, customers, we would use possibly Instagram or Snapchat as opposed to Facebook or Twitter. Companies, I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but social media toolkits are things that companies have started developing and implementing and with a lot of success. Um, they basically are toolkits which include templates for Facebook and Twitter posts, as long as, along with other various other social media portals. And these kits tend to work very well, and they ensure that you know you have your correct strategy in place. You create a more cohesive brand, and they're put in such a way. They're also put together in such a way as to save you time and money. So it's all about getting the balance right. With so much to learn and social media moving at such a fast pace, many companies will outsource their social media to multiple agencies. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is not the best of ideas, as agencies really understand the totality of a company's marketing strategy. A far better approach is to stick to one agency that you're happy with and to you know, use their experience and build on them. And this will ensure that as a company, your agency is totally on the same pathway, you talk the same language, and you build your brand and showcase your products together. Social media is one of the few places where companies can actually interact with their potential customers and in a real-time manner. And this can form part of the company's marketing strategy. For example, if a company of yours tweeted that she was about to go shopping for a particular item, we can respond by mentioning something about discounts or promotions. And being online and answering questions within an hour or two is another powerful way of converting your followers to customers. So to summarize very quickly of what we've done so far, always choose strategy over tools, drive your social media marketing against your marketing goals, always look to the future, align your social media, create social media toolkits, get the balance right, and convert to purchase. Okay, right, the next thing I want to take you through, which is um, fairly important, is the actual setting up of the social media side of things. So if we quickly look at you know, the most popular ones, okay, I'm sure you've all heard of this, we're talking Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, YouTube, etc., etc. The one that we're going to look at today is Facebook. Now, probably, uh, I don't know, the, the, you know, one that, that most people have. And before we actually look at setting up an actual Facebook uh, business page, this is not a personal page, by the way, this is a business page. We're going to look at the need. Well, 24 million daily active users within the UK alone, 300 million daily active users within Europe. You have 6% of all digital time which is being spent on Facebook, 27% of drivers admit to checking their Facebook account whilst filling up for gas or grabbing a coffee, 72% of all online users worldwide will visit Facebook at least once monthly, and 20 minutes a day is being spent on Facebook. Now, the Facebook business page is a thing that you will create for your business. Now, how, okay, how do we go about this? So we go to facebook.com pages, and this is the first thing that we come across. And 
when we start, we have to select the category which best fits our business. So I would not select a local or a place unless you have a physical shop. So you select any of the others, just leave local or place unless you have a physical shop. Next part, you have to select the best fit for your business. Uh, bearing in mind that, you know, it's, there's not always a perfect match, but that's not entirely critical. So you select, if you're a pharmaceutical company, you click on pharmaceuticals and hit next. Now, this next section is where we add a profile picture. Now, this is an actual profile picture of your company and not of yourself. And it is, you know, very important. You must do it. Um, the, after this, we come to the about size section, which will be well populated. Try to fill in as much as possible as Google will index this, and this will help your business online. Also remember to say yes to that radio button to ensure that you are a real business. Hit save and you are live. And um, Facebook will now prompt you to like your own page, which is recommended but not essential. Facebook will also invite you to email your contact. Don't do this yet if you're not quite there yet. And Facebook will also ask you to share something, but again, I would leave this alone as we are not quite ready. So no page is complete without a cover photo. You do need that. This is, this is very part of, you know, book, important part of building your brand online. Um, it's vital and you mustn't ignore it. The cover photo needs to be at least 851 by 315 pixels. I would also suggest that you get it professionally designed. As mentioned before, let's try and fill in as much as possible about your company. So we want to go through everything, the short description, the company overview, the descriptions, don't leave anything else. Um, try as hard as you can to fill everything in because this is all part of you setting up a professional social media model and you know allows you to also to get ranked online through social media. And last but not least, we have to review our permissions. Now, again, make sure you do this properly. Um, you know, you, you, might, I, I, you might have age restrictions on your page, you might have county, country or, or county restrictions, who you want to post to, you know, ensure things that everything is as per should be with your actual business page. Okay. Now, here's an example of a page that we did. So as you can see, you have your Facebook page, you'll set up a nice profile picture, logo, showing you the likes, the product, the service, you've been running some quizzes, likes, etc. So it actually gives an idea of, you know, of what the actual page looks like. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at very quickly, which Facebook is very good at, is the type of data that Facebook will show us. So we're gonna look at reach, likes, followers, and Facebook analytics. Here's a typical example of a, of a, of a Facebook uh, page showing you, you know, this is one of ours that we created, so it shows you the reach, the post engagement, the video reach, my largest audiences, males of 25 to 34, how many post likes I've had. And then the other section also is to do the actual um, looking at your most recent posts. Again, giving your reach, your engagement, showing you what your top posts are. And that's basically Facebook. So to conclude, Facebook is a great social media tool. It can help you increase engagement, increase likes, increase sales, it will also improve your brand, it will improve your website, and it will improve your social standing. Okay. Right, so we're not going to go through the social media setup of every single business, or, or should I say every single social media portal, because in all honesty, once you've mastered one, you really, you, the others are fairly, uh, fairly sort of self-explanatory. But I'm going to quickly run through the benefits of using other social media portals and why you should be using them as a, as a business. 
And the first one we're going to look at is Twitter. So, Twitter is a communication tool to interact with people around the world by doing one of the following. Sending people public short messages, sending a specific person a public short message, or sending a person a private short message. Here's an example of a Twitter page. As you can see, the followers following, you have 37,000 followers, 1,400 following. How Twitter affects Google. Okay, well, as you can see, it does impact on your generic rank. I mean, there we type in Bonfire Steakhouse, and as you can see, with a circle, it's coming up. So it shows you that, you know, Twitter is a good, a good form of SEO. Why use Twitter? Well, you have 500 million tweets per day, 305 million active users, 77% of users follow their favorite brands on Twitter. And if we want to look at how companies or how well companies have done, here's a good example. Not bad for a bit of work on Twitter, 6.5 million over two years. You know, the Dell benefited from Twitter. Right, let's continue. So, why use Twitter? Most top brands are on Twitter. Tweets have the greatest chance of going viral. Uh, Twitter can definitely increase your sales. Twitter is a fast way to get your message out. Twitter is a great networking tool. It'll help you refine your brand. And Twitter is good optics. Pinterest. Um, I don't know how many of you use Pinterest. Pinterest is a very exciting tool, very good for images. Not a lot of companies use Pinterest, but the businesses that do see a lot of um, a great return on investment. So let's quickly run you through Pinterest very quickly. Okay, so Pinterest is a growing social bookmarking site that allows its users to tag websites based on images. So Pinterest, as I'm sure you've already, you, you guys already realize, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, um, Pinterest is used purely as an image-based type of uh, social media site. Companies are seeing unprecedented traffic to their own websites from Pinterest users, and Pinterest has experienced explosive growth. The site offers an opportunity to target a different type of uh, user base. Why Pinterest? Well, 33% of all Pinterest signups are men. 93% of all Pinterest users have shopped online within six months. 25 to 44 is your typical age group. So Pinterest offers the unique opportunity to reach a target market that is difficult to reach by other social media channels. And here's an example of a Pinterest page, Whole Foods. You can see the followers, the following. They have 97 pins, six boards. And as you can see, it's purely, purely image-based. You create different boards. So for example, one would say, how does your garden grow? And the board is all about interesting stuff to do with, you know, growing stuff and, and gardening. And that's what Pinterest is about. It's all image-based. Okay, let's carry on. YouTube. Now, YouTube is a very, very important part of any uh, company's marketing. Um, I don't know if any of you know this, but YouTube is as big as well. It's owned by Google, obviously, but YouTube is getting as big as Google, if not bigger. Most people search for, 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 for stuff on YouTube. In fact, people are saying they use it more than Google. But what is actually all the buzz about? Well, 60 hours of video uploaded every minute, or one hour of video is uploaded to YouTube every second. You have 800 million unique visitors to YouTube each month. 70% of all YouTube traffic comes from outside of the US, which is very interesting. Could you make money from YouTube? Well, 3 billion views per week are being monetized through YouTube. 98% of ad ages top 100 advertisers have run campaigns on YouTube and the Google Display Network. And hundreds of advertisers are using 
true view in stream and 60% of all stream ads are now skippable. Now, why would you want to incorporate uh, YouTube into your business? Well, fact one, YouTube has more HD content than any other online video site. Fact two, YouTube mobile gets over 600 million views a day. So just think how, what, what, that, what, what that means to you as a business, having a good and well-optimized mobile site and running videos. And fact three, traffic from mobile devices tripled in 2011. After YouTube, we're going to talk about Snapchat. I don't know how many of you heard of Snapchat, but another, not maybe spoken about social media portal, but one that can work very well. You have something called Snapchat for business. Now, Snapchat is a great way to promote either an event or your business. And you have what's called Snapchat geofilters. And they basically, Snapchat is developed basically what they call geofilters. And these basically allow you to place a logo of your business or event within the confines of Snapchat. Here's an example of a Snapchat filter that you would create, showing off your business. And the idea is to promote your business and brand within the confines of your premises. Your filter must include your business name, which will be shown to all Snapchat users and on-demand geo filters for businesses can use branding, business marks, business names, logos, or other promotional content for your business or brand. They can however use photographs of people, URLs, phone numbers, emails, drug-related content, or content that you don't own or have the authorization to use. And what will this cost? Well, in the UK, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure internationally it's exactly the same, uh, the great thing about Snapchat is it is not expensive at all. We're talking about five pounds per day, which is very affordable as a, as, as a marketing cost. So to conclude, Snapchat is a powerful tool that can be used for business events. It's fairly easy to set up and fairly cheap to run. It can be used to target audiences that you might not find on Facebook and a great way of exhibiting your brand online. Excuse me for one second. Okay, so let's carry on. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about understanding how social media and SEO combine. Quite an interesting topic, which many people don't realize, but there's definitely a synergy between social media and SEO. Are social media portals a ranking factor? Well, Google tells you, or has it ever openly admitted to the fact that social media helps SEO and the ability to get seen online. But in all honesty, it does, and we've proved it, and it's definitely part of the complex algorithm that Google uses to get your business out there. Social helps content. Um, Think of the impact that a tweet might have on your blog or website if it went out to all your followers and was then retweeted. Here's an example of a social media post from the retweets. I mean, if you look down the bottom there, there were 8,007 retweets and 4,929 people favorited that on Twitter. If optimized correctly, your social media profile will rank on Google, as we have said before. Here's an example. As you can see, look at General Electric on Twitter, Instagram, they're there. And as you can see, social media profiles often appear right at the top, thus beating generic SEO. Social media portals now double as social engines. People are no longer just turning to Google to search for products or ads. And so to conclude on this, social media is definitely the new SEO. We need to try and understand that search engine optimization and, social, and searching on social media portals are now wrapped up into one. True branding and true visibility will occur when both factors are combined. Right, now, we're going to now look at ways to analyze your social media performance. No point in having it without actually seeing how they are performing and how to analyze them. So, 
Data is always best analyzed on the spreadsheet, and when it comes to social media analysis, there is no better way. There are literally dozens of metrics you can track and analyze during a social media audit, and deciding which one to focus on will depend on your particular goals. Now, Excel is probably the best idea for this, as it has an entire army of functions and formulas that can be included. Now, here's an example of a social media um, audit spreadsheet that we uh, put together. You can see column A has got your network, B your followers and likes, C your percentage of change, D your engagement, and E your engagement change percentage. So we will examine your follower growth to identify any anomalies in your audience behavior. And the number of social media followers you have matters because bigger numbers translate to higher levels of engagement and more traffic. And to find out your total number of followers, you can simply visit your social network and look at the number displayed on your profile. However, you will get a better, you will get better insights if you go into your social media analytics and look at the graph for the follower growth and look for any outliers in the data. So for example, suppose the graph below represents the followers or likes growth of your Facebook page. As you can see, the daily likes growth is consistent, except for the day when the line spiked to more than 60. And if you simply checked the total number of likes displayed on your Facebook page, you wouldn't know about this. But now that you do, you can start digging into why spikes occurred, check what posted on that day, and see if anyone else tagged you. You also want to look at any analytics for all of your social media networks, to examine your follower growth, and be sure to add your current number of followers to your spreadsheet. Remember that there are plenty of social media tools out there that will make things a lot easier, and that will also save you a lot of time. The next thing we want to look at is to look at impressions to spot potential irregularities in reach. The impressions metric is the number of people who you've seen your social media updates. And at all of the top social networks have built in analytics that show you the number of impressions uh, your updates receive. So, for example, if we jump onto Twitter and look at the Twitter analytics functionality, we can see the number of impressions that we've received, and we can examine where the spike in traffic occurred, taking a closer look to see what caused this. So we can actually see exactly what's going on, which is it's a, it's a great graph here that they do. We also want to go through and analyze all of our social media analytic portals and add the traffic stats to our spreadsheet. A good idea is also to make a note of your posting frequency, which can have a huge impact on your reach and impressions. Now we will look at how to monitor our engagement to find peaks and valleys in our follower interactions. Uh, followers and impressions are useless if you're not getting any engagement. And when you get a good amount of engagement in the form of likes, repins, retweets, and comments, it means your followers are interested in the content you're sharing. You can then focus on replicating the techniques that brought you these results. Monitor engagement. Well, for, so for example, if you're looking at Pinterest, you would uh, view your analytics and you'd see that your average views are down by 10% and you'd have to try and work out why. Review your clicks, we're well, moving on. Let's look at reviewing our clicks and traffic to iron out any inconsistencies. Clicks are very much a form of engagement, but let's take a step back and consider them as a separate metric as they do influence traffic. So whilst analyzing clicks and traffic, we will need to look at the number of clicks to your website in your social media analytics and find the traffic numbers in the traffic analytics. Let's also remember that not all clicks will result in traffic to your site. People might even leave whilst the page is loading, and if the difference between clicks and traffic is massive, you know you have a problem with your actual website. And the best way to check this is through Google Analytics. So we go, so here's an example of a Google Analytics page. So you go to your Google Analytics page on the right hand, on the left hand side of your menu, there's a section called acquisition. You click on acquisition. 
As you acquisition, as you can see, you have overview, traffic, AdWords, search console. There is a section there called social. You click on social, then you click on network referrals, and to your right hand side, it would show you where you're getting your traffic and what social portals are working for you and what aren't. And finally, we will look at view mentions and overall brand reputation. And the first thing we need to understand here or look at is the concept of a mention. Now, a mention occurs when somebody that tags your page or writes and tweets about your company or brand. There are various uh, social listing tools that you can use. And from this graph below, you can quite clearly see that the dark blue lines show the number of mentions, whilst the aqua line will show you the actual social media reach of these mentions. So you can see you had your number was 68, your estimated social media reach was 9279. So, you know, it's, it's a fairly large, this actual sort of graph shows you that you have quite a large estimated social reach. And with, with 68 mentions, and then at the bottom here, you can also see your amount of tweets, Facebook, blogs, forum, news, all to do with your brand. We can even go a step further here by including the number of likes, shares, and comments in respect of mentions about your company. So as you can see, there was 249 likes and one share, four comments, 103 estimated social reach there, 38,887. And let's also remember that no two mentions are ever the same, and this graph quite clearly indicates the negative mentions being in red and the positive being in green. Okay, no one wants negative mentions, but you know this graph only shows you where you you know where you've got where you're going wrong, and if you have any negative mentions or comments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So to conclude. Uh, followers, impressions, engagements, clicks, traffic, and mentions are important metrics to analyze while conducting a social media audit. For your first audit, you should track the relevant data and add it to your spreadsheet. This will be the starting point. And in future audits, include the change percentage to gauge whether your social media strategy is working or if you need to make some changes. Okay, social, now we're going to look at social media agencies. Well, it's hard to imagine businesses today without the internet. And going back in time, it's quite amazing just how many digital skeptics were still around. I'm not sure how many of you remember this, but there was an article written back in 1995 that was published in Newsweek called the Internet Bar. Uh, it basically went on to say that the internet is just a fad. Online shopping, online catalogs, online ticket purchases, what a load of rubbish or a load of cobblers, as they'd say. And the best one was this. How come my local shopping mall does more business in an afternoon than the entire internet handles in a month? Okay, that, that, that's interesting. What's laughable, of course, is that the author was so wrong. Each and every one of these came to fruition. We now shop online, order online, negotiate online, and even learn online. And if we look at social media with the likes of Facebook or Twitter, we will notice how these companies are fundamentally changing the way we reach and interact with customers, offer products or services, or communicate with employees. Social media is 100% the next wave of digital transformation that started with the web. And the impact, the impact is huge. As far as I'm concerned, the best way for businesses to keep their company successful is to fully embrace social media. Not incorporating social media into your business is just like saying that the internet was just a fad. It's also backward looking, blinkered, and a serious business liability. Um, harsh words, well, you know, I hope I haven't offended anyone by saying this. I can only apologize to you if I have. 
that, you know, let's not discount the power of social media in any way. So, why do so many companies out there that are still using social media agencies? Well, possibly a lack of understanding, a lack of faith in the actual product, or even not enough time to go out looking for that perfect partner. All I can tell you is that well over 2 billion people, that's more than a quarter of the planet, are now on social media. And investing in a social media strategy is the best single way to future-proof your business for the years ahead. Technology change is always jarring, and wishing it away or ignoring it altogether will inevitably backfire. Let's just imagine that you took that article that was written in 1995 seriously. What would your business look like today? Or would you even have one? Okay, so we've gone through most of what I wanted to speak about um, on social media. I'm not sure, I've still got a bit more to do, and then we can have a question and, a question and an answer session. I would like to just uh, run through a little bit about our agency, London, and just tell you what we do and how we can possibly help to grow your business for you. Um, so basically, we have a range of social media marketing packages and plans in place all are designed to help you build your brand and attract more customers via social media. And our packages are built around your budget. So whether you're just starting out or looking for a real social media kickstart for your marketing, we have plans in place to suit all business needs. Um, but as a business, should we even think about social media management? Well, let's put this another way. Uh, would you use a car without petrol? Now, this sounds like a really simple and maybe a silly example, but the fact still remains that businesses do just that. Social media needs to be monitored, it needs to be developed, and it needs to be basically highly social. And you know, your social portals might be the cars, but without the petrol management, not a lot's going to happen. And this is where our social media management comes into play. Um, so if you jump onto our website, you can see the various social media packages that we have in place. The other thing we do, which is very, very, very important for any business, is content. Or should I say content marketing? Now, how many of us have heard the saying that content is king? Well, content is vital to your online success and efforts, and a website needs great content to get truly wrapped. Our marketing packages are designed to help you populate your website with informative and interesting content. And we have three packages in place, and they're all monthly plans. And again, you can view our content marketing packages on our website. The other thing we also offer is SEO. So with all the competition, ranking your site can seem almost impossible. But um, what if you had a way of getting seen locally and nationally and at a much quicker rate than through the normal channels? Well, local SEO. Um, many businesses seem to forget about this highly effective way of getting traffic to their website. Local SEO is powerful. It's a fact that you do get a lot of local hits within, say, a 25 or 50 kilometer radius of your business. And it's something as a business that if you don't have, you should seriously think about taking on. The other thing we also offer to a lot of companies is in-house training. So basically, we offer full social media training, digital staff training, and best digital practices. Okay, and that is basically about it. Um, the seminar has possibly gone a little bit shorter than we um, anticipated. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed it though. The slides are well available to anyone who wants them. I'm more than happy to uh, send them across to you. 
any of the 26 attendees you know, that, have, that have attended, I just want to thank you very much. Um, I know the organizer now is also keen to have a, a, um, a quick sort of question and answer session. So I'm going to be around here for at least half an hour, if not longer. If anyone wants to ask me any questions via the, uh, the uh, uh, webinar organizer or via myself, please feel free to do so. And I just want to thank you very, very much for attending. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, there seemed to be um, an echo, uh, poor quality of audio, but I hope you can questions. hear me, there. Can you hear me? There's a question on all businesses introduced. Uh, Uh, Daryl, there, there's a question. Can all businesses introduce themselves? And if there's anything I haven't covered, anything specific to this, um, to what you want to hear again, please ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, Daryl, unfortunately, I believe you are unable to hear us. Um, 